हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द चैनल इजी मेडिसिन वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल द एंड एंड इफ यू लाइक इट देन प्रेस द लाइक बटन एंड सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन नियर इट सो यू कैन गेट द न्यू अपडेट्स विच वी आर पुटिंग ऑन द चैनल एंड शेयर योर रिव्यूज इन द कमेंट बॉक्स विच हेल्प अस टू मॉडिफाई अवर चैनल सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज इन्फेक्शियस मोनोन्यूक्लियोसिस और ग्लैंडुलर फीवर लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड here we will go through the definition pathogenesis clinical feature and laboratory findings of this disease so definition infectious mononucleosis or glandular fever is a benign that is a non cancerous tumor benign is means and self limiting proliferative lymphoproliferative disease that is a number of lymphocytes increased are increased caused by the epstein barr virus one of the herpes virus actually it's of b category uh it's actually uh spread by the person to person contact that is by kissing or transfer of any virally contaminated saliva seen in the young people more and uh, it's uh, just uh, such type of syndrome next we will see its pathogenesis so here okay. it's easily explained uh when a person transmit it by the intimate contact or viral infection the cells reaches into the pharynx and cause pharyngitis which okay, which causes a nasopharyngeal carcinoma that's another disease when the genetic susceptibility in the cells occurs but uh, as we are focused on the infection mononucleosis so it causes pharyngitis and then it uh, go goes into the blood stomach and then blood so there it causes the, there the ebv cells get shredded and then ebv infected b cells are formed they goes in, into polygonal activation then they cause beta cell in proliferation which activates the cd8 plus t cells that are our lymph leukocytes and then they cause infection mononucleosis which Includes the lymphadenopathy, fever, hepatosplenomegaly, sore throat, rashes, meningitis, and cephalitis, etc. Here, the two pathogenesis of also two diseases, just like a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Burkitt's lymphoma, are discussed. That is, uh, in the middle of the stage, if the EBV infected B cells, if the monoclonal proliferation occurs, then it causes the B cell NHL, that is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. and if the t8 and 14 cells are included then it causes the burkitt's lymphoma this t8 and t14 cells are interleukins in the sorry interferons interferons so but we are focus on your infection nucleosides which are due to the cd8 plus t cell activation then we discuss its clinical feature incubation period is about 30 to 50 days or uh, even in adults and shorter in the children it causes the it is divided into the three parts that is a pre dorm pre dromal period that is uh, from 3 th- to 5 days then it's a uh, frank clinical feature that is 7 to 21 days and after that the uh, complications are there in the pre dromal period that uh, the symptoms are mild that is a uh, headache and uh, fatigue and myalgia etc uh, in the frank clinical feature the main symptoms are included that is the lymphadenopathy then sore throat that is then fever then hepatosplenomegaly then erythematous rash then edema and jaundice are sometimes included mm, then complications which mostly occur in the children that is a neurological manifestation spleen splenic rupture upper airway obstruction as we seen in the pathogenesis also causes the pharyngitis then autoimmune cold hemolytic anemia and bacterial super infection these are the clinical features then its laboratory findings which are also divided into the three parts that is hematological findings serological diagnosis and liver function test here the simplified forms are given that is in the hematological finding the total leukocyte count that is uh, tlc is increased this can be observed in the 2 to 3 weeks the lymphocytosis occur that is an increased t cell mainly the t cell lymphocytes are included then thrombocytopenia that is increase in the platelet occurs which usually occurs during the fourth week then reversal of the cd4 plus and cd8 plus t ratio this is the ratio which uh, uh, is important for the providing immunity which you can study later on uh, the here 
it mainly occurs due to the decrease in the CD4 plus and T cell and increase in the CD8 plus T cells. So the ratio gets reversed and uh, so finally 10 to 12 percent atypical mononucleosis cell that is C T cells are found from maximum at from the 7th to 10th and they persist up to the 2 months. So these are the hematological findings. Then uh, we come to the third one that is a liver function test. Abnormal SGPT and SGOT test increases the increase in the serum alkaline phosphate and little bit increase in the serum bilirubin is also observed. And now we come to the serological diagnosis. That is, uh, it concludes the two tests. That is a test for heterophile antibodies and EBC specific antibodies test. Uh, this the uh, name of these two tests are on, only important. And if you want to study this test, then what is a heterophile antibodies test? Heterophile antibodies test. Uh, here in this test, the patient serum is absorbed with the guinea pig kidney. Serum dilutions are prepared from it and which are used for agglutination of red cell of sheep, horse or cow and, has report, and are reported as heterophile titer of this syndrome. A high serum titer of 40 or more times is a di perfect diagnostic of acute uh, infectious mononucleus infection during first week. They remain persistent during the third week and even the test remain positive uh, after the three months after the illness has started. This test has to be repeatedly performed to see the uh, to see the recovery period or if the recovery occurs in this period or not. Currently this test is not used and more sensitive and other tests are also available. So this is a heterophile antibodies test. Now we come into the EBV specific test that is a epsilon bar virus test specific test. This uh, antibodies uh, specific antibodies against the viral capsid and nucleus of the EBV can be demonstration in the patient who are negative for heterophile antibody test. So firstly specific antibody against EBV capsid antigen are produced which show the elevated titers for example the IgM antibodies appear early and is the most useful in the diagnosis of its acute condition that is IgM antibodies are when you see the IgM antibodies in the blood then you, you can say that it's an acute IEM that is infectious mononucleosis and the IgG antibodies appear later but it persists to the lifetime so it can be used to see that is even a person suffered from a past experience of the infectious mononucleosis or not secondly the antibodies against EBV nuclear antigen we see this uh, first one is against the EBV capsid and second one is against the EBV nuclear antigen are almost detected just like the IgG they also remain throughout the life and detected around 3 to 6 weeks then antibodies to early antigen that is antibodies to early ant antigen they just act like the IgM and uh, um, they also appear around 3 to 6 months remain elevated sorry not appear sorry they remain elevated around 3 to 6 months and when finally the Ig antibodies to EBV antigen they properly provide the high risk of developing the EBV induced cancer moreover the detection of the EBV is done by CSF and PS PCR method EBV antigen is done by the CSF or PCR method so this is all about the infection mononucleosis hope you like this video press the like button and subscribe thank you